Welcome back everybody. Moving on to the next section, we're going to start the section off by talking about the chain rule for derivatives. And the chain rule is something that we've briefly touched on when we talked about the power of a function rule in previous sections. However, the power of a function rule is only a specific case of the chain rule. So in this video, we're going to generalize everything. And to begin the video, we're going to review a little bit of advanced functions and more specifically what composite functions are because the chain rule is used to find the derivative of composite functions. So let's say we have these two functions here, g of x is equal to the square root of x, and h of x is equal to x to the power of three plus two. So now let's introduce a new function, f of x equals the composite function g of h of x. So what does this mean, g of h of x? How are we combining these two functions up here? Well, let's write g of x here. We know that g of x is equal to the square root of x. That means that g of 5 is equal to the square root of 5, or g of a is equal to the square root of a. Well, g of h of x, well, we know h of x is x to the power of 3 plus 2. We would just plug in x to the power of 3 plus 2 in for x, like we've been doing up here. So it would be x to the power of 3 plus 2. So we know g of h of x is the same as g of x to the power of 3 plus 2, and that's equal to the square root of x to the power of 3 plus 2. We combine these functions. Basically, h of x, this portion, this expression, we subbed in for the x in g of x. Now we can also make another composite function, h of g of x. So instead of the h expression going into the x value for the g function, the g function, the g expression, is going to go into the x for the h function. So we would just plug in the square root of x for the x value in h of x. So we'd have the square root of x to the power of 3 plus 2. So that's another composite function that we can make with these two functions. However, I'm going to concentrate on this original function that I gave you up here for the rest of the video, but I thought I should just mention you can make the opposite function as well. Now, another way that this composite function here can be represented as is they can say y is equal to the square root of u, and then u is equal to x to the power of 3 plus 2. And notice how if we combine these, if we sub in this expression of u into this u, we would end up with that same composite function, y is equal to the square root of x to the power of 3 plus 2. Now you may be asking yourself, why am I showing you two different formats to represent the same composite function? And the reason is, is once we begin to discuss the chain rule, Usually the chain rule is given in two different types of notation, and the notation depends on how a composite function is presented, whether it's presented this way or whether it's presented this way. So as the video goes along, it'll make more sense to you. So one way that the chain rule is presented is that if f of x is equal to g of h of x, meaning a function within another function, so h of x is like the inner function, g is like the outer function, well, the derivative of that composite function is going to be the derivative of that outer function g, so g prime h of x, that inner function is going to stay the same, times the derivative of that inner function. So as you can see, very similar to the power of a function rule, but now we're representing the composite function as a general case. We don't have this like h of x to the power of n. Basically, this outer function g can be anything. So if we take that composite function that we're given, let's rewrite it, but instead of putting a square root, let's put this uh, power to a half. That's always what you want to do, change any radicals to a rational exponent. So we got f of x equals x to the power of 3 plus 2 all to the power of a half. So the derivative of this, notice how we're going to apply the chain rule, or more specifically, the power of a function rule that we've been dealing with before. Basically, we're going to take the derivative of that outer function, which is the square root of x, or x to the power of a half. In this case, it's a function to the power of a half. So taking the derivative of that outer function, we basically apply the power rule. So we bring the 1 half down. The inner function, x to the power of 3 plus 2, is going to stay the same, and then we're going to subtract 1 from the exponent. 1 half minus 1 gives us negative a half. 
and then we're going to multiply it by the derivative of that inner function. So the derivative of h of x, h of prime x, is just going to be 3x squared in this case. So then if we simplify this derivative, not leaving any rational or negative exponents, we would end up with 3x squared over 2 to the square root of x to the power of 3 plus 2. Basically, we took this x to the power of 3 plus 2 to the power of negative a half, brought it down to the denominator, so it changed into a positive exponent, a positive a half, and then the, if the uh, exponent is a positive a half, that's the same as just the square root. So this ends up being the simplified derivative of this composite function here. And we did it using this chain rule. Now, another way that the chain rule can be presented is if the composite function is given in this format. So if y is a function of u, and u is a function of x, then the derivative of y in terms of x is equal to the derivative of y in terms of u times the derivative of u in terms of x. And this notation here is sometimes called Leibniz notation. I think that's how you say the guy's name. But uh, anyway, it's basically another format for the chain rule. Basically, both of these are the same just in a different format and you're going to be running into both of these so you have to get comfortable with using both. So let's try to work through this notation and see if we get this same derivative. So dy by dx is equal to the dy by d or the derivative of y in terms of u. So the derivative of y in terms of u, well we know that y is equal to the square root of u or u to the power of a half. So getting the derivative of that is very simple. We just apply the power rule. So we would bring the one half down, the u would stay the same, and then we would subtract one from the exponent. So this here, one half u to the power of negative one half represents the derivative of y in terms of u. And then the derivative of u in terms of x, we would use this function here. So the derivative of u in terms of x is just 3x squared. So this bracket here represents the derivative of y in terms of u, and then this bracket here represents the derivative of u in terms of x. Now notice how we're finding the derivative of y in terms of x. And over here on the right side, we have this u variable here. But since we're finding the derivative of y in terms of x, it's nicer if we have everything on the right side in terms of x as well. So for this u here, we can just sub in the function that u is defined as in terms of x. So instead of writing u here, we can just write x to the power of 3 plus 2. So then doing that, subbing in this x to the power of 3 plus 2 for u, we end up with 1 half x to the power of 3 plus 2. So instead of u, we write this bracket here to the power of negative a half times 3x squared. And notice here how we're at the same step that we were here. So then when we simplify that, we end up with that derivative 3x squared over 2, the square root of x to the power of 3 plus 2. So notice how we got the same derivative with the chain rule, but in two different types of notation. So you're going to run into questions with both notations. Sometimes you'll be given a function like this straight away, just the composite function together right away. So they're going to ask you to find the derivative of this function, and then you just apply this chain rule here. So basically we're applying the power of a function rule, right? We're bringing the one half down, subtracting one from the exponent, keeping the inner function the same, then multiplying the derivative of that inner function. So that's the chain rule here that we're applying. And then a lot of times, instead of giving the composite function together at once right away, it will be separated into two functions. So you'll have y in terms of u, or in terms of any variable, and then u in terms of x. And then you have to apply the chain rule using this notation and this process. But either way, in the end, as long as you remember to have your final derivative here all in terms of x, so you're going to have to plug in that original u expression into the derivative of u right here, you'll end up with the same derivative. So make sure you're comfortable with both formats. You're going to be running into those in your textbook. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched.
Peace out.